Let's talk about how to be creative, but still get things done. See, I used to believe that because I had a creative mind, it meant I don't have to be organized and I don't really have to be very productive. I can come up with all the ideas, I can be as creative as I want, but I really found the execution so difficult. And usually that's how it goes, right? On different teams, you have people who are the creatives and then you have people who do the execution, the people who do the organization, but if you're a one-man team, you have to try to be all of those things. And over time, I figured out ways and realized that I can and wanted to be both, or at least know how to be both. About three years ago, I got really tired of myself. I was committing to all the things and doing absolutely nothing. I had pages and pages of ideas, but I never really got to the point of creating, executing, and finishing something. And I think that that really um, affected my confidence and belief in myself at the time. So I made a decision. I was gonna start a YouTube channel and start building a community that makes me accountable to really show up and actually commit. Three, maybe four years ago now, I started creating YouTube content. Welcome to my channel. And finally, turned all the ideas that I had into videos. Videos that could last longer than 60 seconds like I was doing on other platforms. Videos that I could really share so much of myself into. I had an Instagram page at that time, but there's really this intimacy about YouTube, this community that you end up building. Um, the amount that you end up being able to share ends up being so much more and at a different scale. And I feel like, on YouTube, I was able to grow and be myself as time went on. There's always these little differences in platforms and YouTube was one that felt most like family. I remember I used to premiere my videos every single week. So from the first one that I did, which I think was my morning routine video, I remember premiering it. And at the time there was maybe, I don't even know, definitely less than a hundred people. I think maybe there was like 20 to 30 people that tuned in to watch it. And doing a premiere, you can speak to people live. And it was the best because every single week I could see different people showing up um, or the same people showing up every single week and we built a relationship we would talk about how our day was how our week's been um, discuss the video banter with each other and even though I hadn't met these people I really felt this sense of um, not just community the sense of love that was coming towards me and it was at a time where I really felt like I needed it because I was putting myself out in a way that I never had before and so it was a really beautiful way to connect and actually this was during the pandemic and so it felt more needed than ever people were tuning in more they were so engaged and everybody was wanting to learn so much more about themselves. And I was going through a phase of learning about myself too. And so it kind of came at the perfect time. So anyway, all of that just to say that the first step in turning your creativity into productivity is actually finding a way to be accountable, whether it's to yourself, whether it's to other people, an accountability partner, a community of friends, maybe even a family member. And honestly, um, I can talk from personal experience to say that when you've got someone that you're accountable to, and I don't mean accountable like your parents when you're scared of them, uh, or a boss that you're scared of, I mean accountable in the sense of responsibility. You have a responsibility to them. You have committed to them. It's just like being in a relationship with someone. Um, it's the same way, in the same way you're in a relationship with your community or with yourself. You can be your accountability partner. You can commit to goals and, and have um, markers that you commit to for yourself. And so, um, having that accountability partner is really important to sticking to your goals. Secondly, I had to set myself goals and targets. Um, I had made the mistake in the beginning of making huge goals that I couldn't actually keep up with. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do daily vlogs and I'm gonna do daily content that I'm gonna post every single day and I put all this pressure on myself. It was kind of like setting myself up for failure. And so over time, as I've made big goals and failed at them, I started realizing how important it was to actually just make small goals. Like it's okay to make little goals, not have these huge, large ones that feel so unattainable that they actually end up scaring you. So I started slow and I created small baby steps. So whether that means I'm gonna, for me, my goal was creating content regularly. So whether that meant I was producing something every month to start off with, at least I could show myself I was committed and I was able to meet that goal every month rather than saying I'm going to create daily vlogs and within two days I feel like I failed myself because I wasn't able to commit to it. Start slow, make goals and measurable things that you can commit to and stick to. A big one for me was block creating. So if you haven't heard of that before, it basically means that you have your creative days that are separate 
to the days where you will have to be more strategic or organized. So what I end up doing is I have creative days or hours where I only think about being creative on those days. Maybe I'm creating food videos. So we end up being in the kitchen the whole day. So I can have one hat on. I don't have to keep switching between them. One, it drains a lot of energy. And two, if you're used to being someone who is creative more than organized, it can actually make you feel really flustered trying to go between both. And so you'll be more productive doing it this way. So I have my creative days and then I'll have my days of action. So full days where I'm actually planning or organizing or ideating, like having a book that I'm just writing out in all my ideas. And so I really try to separate both of them. They might be a day apart, they might be weeks of one and then weeks of the other, but I definitely try to segregate both of them. It actually allowed me to make less mistakes as well. And it's been proven that you end up being able to focus more in each area because it uses different parts of your brain. So switching from one side of the brain to the other um, actually just makes your brain work a lot harder than it needs to. I'm basically telling you guys all the mistakes I made to stop you from making them for yourself. Um, so I've been reflecting a lot on this and one thing I had a habit of doing is, especially if you have a creative mind, and I keep saying that because I think it's a positive thing, but especially if you have a creative mind, you also have an imaginative mind. So what happens is you take this really amazing thing that you're excited about and suddenly, because you don't take action on it, it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in your mind. You start creating this whole idea of what it is and it started off as something exciting and suddenly it becomes something scary because you've made it into this big scary monster when actually it's something that at the beginning that you were very, very excited to do. So what I've started doing is trying to take action as soon as possible. Stop making things so big in your mind. And the only way you can do that is by taking action soon and action is by taking action sooner rather than later. So have your big goals. Big goals are so important. Have your end goal, but make sure that you also have the tiny little steps in between. And then you can forget about the big goal and just follow one step at a time. For me, having checklists helped so much because you also give yourself these little boosts of encouragement. Like every time I would tick something off, uh, whether I'm in the kitchen or whether I'm filming something and I have guidelines for it, like ticking everything off gives you a little sense of achievement as each step is completed, which then that positive encouragement carries you on to the next step and the next step and the next step. And so it's really important to also give yourself little rewards as you go along. Which brings me on to celebrating yourself. Look, I don't think that you should celebrate too much before something's completed that you end up celebrating more than you actually end up working. But even if it's just emotional and positive words to yourself, like be proud of yourself that you have made it to the next goal and the next step and the next step. Making your way to the baby steps is also a celebration. It's not just the end goal that's a celebration. That means you are working on yourself every single day. It means you are committing to something every single day and that's worth celebrating. And so having positive words to yourself, um, thinking positive thoughts about your ability to commit to something, it creates a positive mindset towards you and then feeds into repeating that action over and over again. And so before you know it, you'll have been consistent for a week and then a month and then a year and then, like me, you'll be like four years into creating what you've wanted to create for so long and you won't even realize it. So right now, obviously, I'm focusing on content that I produce because that was when I started changing my creativity into productivity. But you can totally apply this same information to anything that you're trying to commit to. So a mistake that I also made was getting too attached to what I was producing. Trying to have perfection, not even for myself, I realized that when we're constantly worrying about how other people are gonna see us, you actually end up having your eyes on the complete wrong thing. And I remember when I started creating YouTube videos, I was like, I have to make the most complex recipes ever. Like I need to show people that I can create really amazing, unique recipes. So I make all these recipes that would take hours to create. And I kept doing that for how I wanted people to see me only to realize that what they actually wanted was simple day-to-day -day content that they can actually relate to, not like extravagant, cakes that I was making that you'd make once a year. And so we have to remember that with creativity comes shifts and changes. And sometimes it takes you places that you weren't even expecting to. And I definitely noticed that through my YouTube content, it's been a place where I've been able to really see and hear what my community wants what they want to learn about, what they want to explore through my page. And so it's been such a good learning place for me to take me out of my own head, my own view of what I want people to see of me, 
but to lean into what other people want because at the end of the day if you are trying to build a community online it is so much more about them than it is about you so one thing i found when i made the shift into tuning my creativity into creating something was that your creativity can run out because you are producing and producing and producing what you forget is that you also have to stay inspired and most importantly creativity comes in the every single day like being able to stay present in your life every day inspiration is everywhere like every single thing that you do every person that you interact mm -hmm. with every place that you go to you have the opportunity to gain creativity and inspiration from it but you have to be present in that moment you honestly never know where your consistency and turning your creativity into action can actually end up taking you like i started with pretty much no expectation except for to have an output at the time and three years later of committing to this platform i've got all of you this incredible sweet magnificent community and so many of you that have been here since day one since the day that i put out my 5 a.m ish morning routine and you were up at 5 a.m trying it with me i don't know whether many of you know this about me but when i moved from the uk to the us i was on a spouse visa so i actually couldn't work and i had spent years studying to work because I was really excited to share the stuff that I had learned with other people. I was working in a hospital and I could only work there for like a month before I had to leave. And so I came to America, came to America, and I honestly couldn't use any of that. And so I was in a really lost place of trying to figure out this creative energy that I have, but what can I do with it and how can I share it with other people? It was really wonderful for me because after years of feeling like I wasn't making money or wasn't like actually doing work that inspired me this platform gave me the opportunity to not only do what i love but also feel like i was finally working in a way that i could also provide for myself too so many things came from this so many incredible things so this is a reminder to all my creative people out there don't convince yourself that you can't also be productive you absolutely can because trust me i was the worst at it and now I'm here and I'm still working on it, but I can definitely say it has been a journey worthwhile committing to. So thank you all so much for watching. Today, yesterday, three years ago, I appreciate you all and thank you so much for watching.